God, enliven and preserve your church with your perpetual mercy. Without your help, we mortals will fail. Remove far from us everything that is harmful and lead us toward all that gives life and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Also with you. Please greet one another with the word of God's peace.
I completely forgot about the church chat. I was so excited about God's work, our hands, and all those details that I forgot that Miss Cindy has some things to tell us this morning. So please. No big deal. It happens to me all the time. So um, I am here to invite you to join um, with the students at Meadow Lane Elementary to become a reader with them. Uh, we've done this program for many years, so I'm hoping some of you that have been involved or some new ones will join us. Uh, when I visited with the principal, Ms. Schulzkamp, she would like us to work with the kindergarten level students, which is my very favorite group of kids, so I'm excited. I get to actually be a volunteer this year, so I'm excited for that. Uh, we will be working with kindergarten students, and that will be just reading to them. You can bring in a favorite story, or they will have a story uh, that they may like, and you can read it to them. This year, our time slot is from 11.55 to 12.25, so maybe over lunch hour. I don't know. I think it's better than the time we had last year, so... Um, I hope you can uh, make a difference in the life of a child. If you are interested, um, you'll need to sign up to be a volunteer there. If you do backpacks and come over to the school, that's the same volunteer level. Those, when you are okay to be a volunteer, that is a level three, and that is good for three years. So if you're not sure, just call the office at Meadow Lane Elementary, and they'll be able to check with you to make sure that uh, you are still okay. It's just a matter of signing up is all it is. Um, I can't think of anything else. I do have a sign-up sheet in the Connection Center if you are interested. We hope to start the first part of October. So any questions, contact me after church. Thank you. Today's reading comes from the 13th chapter of Romans. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is already the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then throw off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk decently as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in illicit sex and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please read responsively with me from Psalm 119. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I will observe it to the end. Give me understanding that I may keep your law and observe it with my whole heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Turn my heart to your decrees and not to selfish gain. Turn my eyes from looking at vanities. Be gracious to me according to your word. Confirm to your servant your promise, which is for those who fear you. Turn away the disgrace that I dread, for your ordinances are good. See, I have longed for your precepts. In your righteousness, be gracious to me.
The Holy Gospel is from the 18th chapter of Matthew. If your brother or sister sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If you are listened to, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. But if that person refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on, anything, on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For, for where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. And I'd like to invite the kids to come up for children's time. Good morning. Do we need a couple more squares? We can pull some more squares down if we need them. Okay. Oh, we're missing one. Oh, okay. Okay. So today's kind of a big day for us because everybody's wearing these yellow shirts. Yeah, I see yours. Yeah, and Trey's got one, and Mommy's got one, and if you two want one, we've got some in the back, so you're, you're welcome to take one if you want one. So this is a really important day, and it's called God's Work, Our Hands. Now, why do you suppose that they would call it that? But let's start with the God's Work part. What is that about? What are we going to go do? We're going to go work, right? Yeah, but we're not doing it for ourselves. We're doing it to help other people, right? There they come. Yeah, we're just getting started. So there you are. So we're talking about our yellow shirts, and we're talking about what God's work is. And we just said that that means that that's when we help people. That's when we're doing God's work. So how does God do God's work in the world? With what? With our fingers? <laughs> yeah, with our hands, right? That's what it says. So we do God's work, but God uses our hands to do that work. So what we're going to do today is really important stuff because we're going to help a lot of people. But we don't do it for us. We do it for them. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And so there's great joy in serving. It should make us happy to do things for other people because it is fun to serve other people, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. So I hope you come today. I know you, you're all planning to come. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, here comes the other one. Maybe. <laughs> there we go. There we go. But we're going to have a great time. As soon as, as soon as we're done with church, we're going to have a great time. But I shouldn't say that we're done with church, because church isn't just about this hour that we're together, is it? Church is all about how we live our lives, right? Yeah, and we should live lives that help other people because that really makes Jesus happy. <coughs> Jesus gets so happy. Bless you. <laughs> Jesus is so happy when we love others and when we help them out. So we get to do that today. So I'm super excited. This is going to be fun. So I hope you'll come. Okay? Ready to pray? Okay. We'll fold our hands and we'll bow our heads. And repeat after me, okay? Dear Jesus, 
Thank you for loving us. Help us to love others and to serve them with great joy. Amen. Good job. Thanks for coming up today. We'll see you later. Good job. Thank you. <clears throat> Where two or three are gathered in my name, I will be there with them, says the Lord. This is one of the greatest promises that Jesus gives us. It's comforting, it's reassuring. Sometimes I wonder if what he really meant to say was, where two or three are gathered, there will be conflict. He knows us so well, amen? But Matthew 18 is this famous chapter on how we are to deal with conflict, both interpersonally as well as within the church. These words are instructions for us on how we are to live together. Now, of course, it is human nature for us to squabble. Of course we do. Um, to have different opinions. To see the world a little bit differently than our neighbors might. And maybe we can't or we don't always meet in the middle on some things. This is all very normal and natural. It's also very normal and natural that we have all experienced foot and mouth disease, as in open mouth, insert foot. We all say things sometimes that we really don't mean, or perhaps we did mean what we said, but it just didn't come out the right way. So Jesus lays it out for us, and he tells us how we are to address conflict and work things out. And first and foremost, he says, go talk to them. This seems like adulting 101, right? It's just completely obvious. You have a misunderstanding, you go and talk it out, have a conversation about it. And while it might seem obvious, it's not as easy as you might think. Many of us do not like confrontation. And it's much easier to talk about someone than it is to talk to someone. And Jesus obviously did not own a computer, but he says right here that using a computer to solve your problems is not a good idea. Don't talk about them. Don't po post about the other person on social media. Go have that face-to-face -face conversation. There is a, a great scene in the movie, The Intern, you, if you have not seen it, put this one on your list. It's a good one. And one of the guys at, at work has a crush on one of the other women, and, but he unknowingly went out on a date with the woman's roommate. And that didn't sit so well with her. And so Robert De Niro stars in this with Anne Hathaway, and, and he's talking to, the guy is talking to Robert De Niro about it, and he says, well, you talked to her, right? You said you were sorry? And the guy says, well, I sent her a text message that had several O's in it. So it was like, I'm so sorry. And Robert De Niro just shakes his head. Yeah. I mean, whether, whether it's the movies or real life, a text message apology, apology most of the time is not going to cut it. It's important to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation. And if that doesn't work out, or if it's too scary to go alone, because sometimes it is, we're still not off the hook. Jesus offers step two, take someone with you. God says it is not good for the human being to be alone. So take someone with you. Better yet, each person can bring someone to the conversation. It helps you, they will help you listen to each other, talk things out if that's possible. 
And sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. So Jesus said, okay, when that doesn't work, then take it to the church. You talk to me, you talk to the church council, because at this point you probably need a mediator. And sometimes you may even need to talk to the bishop, especially when the time comes that the pastor is the one who has sinned. And if that sin is especially grievous, then a chat with the bishop is most certainly appropriate. When there is an abuse of power and the pastor is at fault, you can't exactly go to the pastor and say, hey, you hurt me. That's, that's really, really hard to do. It's more important, most important to go to the bishop to report the allegation. And the final step, if these first three do not work, Jesus says, treat the offending party like a Gentile or a tax collector, which is really pretty interesting because we might think at first glance that Jesus is giving us permission to kick them out or to excommunicate these toxic people from our lives or from the church. And sometimes, quite frankly, that choice is appropriate. But if you think for a minute, who did Jesus spend his time with? Jesus spent his time with the tax collectors and the Gentiles, the outsiders, the least, and the lost. So Jesus is not giving us a blank check to say, well, just cut them out of the community if you can't work it out. What he is saying is that we are to continue to pray for them because you know what? Toxic people need Jesus too. All of us have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God as it's written in Romans 3. So we can pray for a change of heart for the other person or maybe for ourselves. We can pray for reconciliation. And if that's not possible right now, well, maybe it'll be possible someday. But we need to be really careful here because these verses have been misused and abused by some in the church. And they've been used to keep people in abusive relationships. As in, for example, when the husband is abusing his wife, is violent, threatens to kill her, whatever, and the wife uh, reports this abuse to the pastor, the pastor then has said, go work it out, go talk to him. This is what Jesus says to do in Matthew 18. But my friends, when we're talking about extremes like this, Matthew 18 does not apply. When it comes to abuse, mistreatment, cruelty, harm, or life-threatening violence, that is never okay. Just period, full stop. It is never okay. That behavior should never be sanctioned by Scripture. Or perhaps I should say, Scripture should never be used to sanction that kind of behavior. Let me put it that way. That is a misuse of the Holy Scripture. And this is another example of where the church has been wrong to insist that somehow marriage vows are more important than the person who made them. There are times that divorce, as horrible and as painful as it can be, is indeed a blessing. Another, I'm on this kick right now, sorry, but another mistake that the church has made is to insist that instant forgiveness in times of conflict and relationship is what we are called to do. Next week's text is about forgiveness. It picks up right where we leave off today. So I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but let me say that yes, it is important that we forgive. Of course it is. We are to forgive just as we ourselves have been forgiven. Yes, yes, yes. Even if that sin feels unforgivable, like a betrayal of any kind. But just because we forgive does not mean that what happened was ever okay or that it didn't matter because it wasn't okay and it does matter. But what also matters is that forgiveness is a process. It is rarely instantaneous, at least for me. It is rarely instantaneous. But forgiveness is about release. At the core of forgiveness is we let go of the right to be angry at the other person. And when we forgive, then we release that burden. 
we release what we have been carrying. The guilt, the shame, the hurt, the anger, the fear, whatever it might be. That's the point of forgiveness. It helps with all of that. But I'm going to say more about that next week. So same bat time, same bat channel. The point is that God does not want us to be like this. God does not want us to be burdened by our unresolved hurts, anger, and fear because it really can feel like a pile of rocks on your head. Christ lived and died and rose again to set us free from sin and from everything that binds us so that we can have life and have it abundantly. It's hard to feel abundant life when you have a pile of rocks on your head. And it's not fair to let a hurtful person take up so much real estate in our heads, especially when they don't even care about us in the first place. So like Elsa said in the Disney movie, Frozen, we have to learn how to let it go. It sounds simple, right? Sure. Does that make it easy? No, not at all. And I really do struggle with this for myself, as I seek to follow Jesus and his teaching, I really struggle with forgiveness and how to let things go. But I have learned that I am much happier when I am able to do it. And I need God's help. I can't do it by myself. But I need God's help to help me forgive. And trained professionals can also be a big help, like a spiritual director, a therapist, or a life coach. Paul reminds us in Romans 13, 8, with the very first words that Donna read for us this morning from Paul, Owe no one anything, he says, except to love one another. For one who loves another fulfills the law. Well, he's talking about the big ten, right? He's talking about loving God and loving neighbor. These are all summed up in the Ten Commandments. If you divide them, not quite in half, um, if you do a 30 70 split, we, we find out how we are to love God and how we turn, are to love each other. And when someone hurts us and when we can't work it out, and again, sometimes it's not appropriate that we do, what's important to know is that when someone has sinned against us, we really don't owe them anything. But at the same time, it's not good to wish them harm or to pray for their demise either. There are times when the most loving thing that we can do for ourselves and for the other person is to end the relationship and move on. And that can be an incredibly gut-wrenching, painful, horrible choice. But sometimes it really is the most loving thing we can do. And if Jesus had his druthers, would we all live in peace and harmony with each other? Of course. That's of course, that's exactly what he wants, but that's probably not going to happen, at least not on this side of paradise anyway. And if there are squabbles in heaven, because some people do like to argue, so we'll put the, the, all the lawyers in their own little room and let them do their thing, and I'm sure they will resolve all their conflicts and love. But can you imagine Jesus saying, okay, don't make me come over there? Yeah. <laughs> Conflict is part of the deal. It is part of being human. And it can be really tricky to navigate this in a really healthy way. But Jesus already knew this about us. And he gave us a game plan in order to work toward resolution. We are to talk to each other. We can take someone with us. We can take it to the church. Or, and, and, or, we can end the relationship, but continue to pray for the other person. <clears throat> and just maybe, if we can learn how to do this, where two or three are gathered, instead of expecting conflict, we can, we can look forward to meeting Christ in that meeting, in each other, because that is exactly where Jesus promises to be. Amen.
But when human bonds are broken and we lack the love of skill to restore the hope of healing, give us grace and make us still. Through that stillness with your spirit, come into our world of stress. For the sake of Christ, for living all the failures we confess. You in us are bruised and broken, Hear us as we seek release from the pain of earlier living. Set us free and grant us peace. Send us, God of new beginnings, humbly hopeful into life. You as us a means of blessing make us stronger give us faith give us faith to be more faithful give us hope to be more true give us love to go stand as you are able. We are God's people by baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us join our hearts and our minds together in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this day. Thank you for the promise that where two or three are gathered in your name, you are there in the midst of us. But Lord, this human thing, it is not easy. It is not easy to be in loving relationships with each other all the time. So we thank you for this instruction that comes in Matthew 18 on how we can handle conflict. And it's not perfect and things don't always work out the way that we want them to. But we pray, Lord, that you would be with us as we try to, to deal with these conflicts in our lives and as we try to, to live in harmony with one another. For when we live in harmony, we know that we are loving you and our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for your church throughout the world, and we ask, uh, ask a blessing on every faithful heart who gathers in your name. We pray, Lord, that all of us can use this instruction in Matthew 18, that we can learn to resolve our differences and learn to work together to be your hands and feet in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world particularly places that are living with injustice, injustice, violence, or fear. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Russia. We pray, Lord God, for an end to this conflict. Send your Holy Spirit into the hearts of these people and help them to come to a, a peaceful solution to this violence. We pray for um, the people in Morocco as they recover from a very strong earthquake 
Just be with them, Lord, and be with those who have lost loved ones. Comfort them in this hour of grief. Be with those who are coming to help, and please keep them safe as they dig through the rubble. For all other places, Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit would, would dwell and help your people to love each other. We pray for peace in your world and for an end to war and violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for this beautiful earth, Lord God. We're so grateful for the change of season. We've had a, a reasonably cool summer, but we've had a couple of hot days, so the, the cooler weather is very much welcome. Thank you for the rain that is to come tonight, and please continue to send the right amounts and at the right time. Bless the farmers and ranchers and all those who work the land. Help them with their harvest and, and with their herding, that their, uh, their, their works, the work that they put in would be abundant in results. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, the sad, and the lonely. We pray for those who are grieving, and we pray for those who are dying. We pray for those who do not know you, that they too would come to know of your mercy and your grace. And this morning, Lord, we also pray for those who are in conflict, that that, that, that um, conflict and, and the argument could be resolved amicably. Hear now the names we lift before you who are in special need of your loving care, whether we speak those names out loud or from within our hearts. <clears throat> Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the anniversary of September 11th approaches tomorrow, we are still mindful, Lord, of those who are suffering from the attacks on that terrible day. Please be with them in their suffering. Ease that, ease that suffering wherever possible. Bless those who advocate and bless those who help. We pray, Lord, that as our country continues to, to heal from this time, we pray that, that we can learn to live in harmony with you and with one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank and praise you, O oh God, for the ways that you use us at St. Andrews. Thank you for making us and transforming us, molding us into a welcoming place as we seek to be reaching out and sharing grace. Please bless our time this afternoon or later this morning, I should say, as we work together on our God's work, our hands projects. We pray, Lord, that you would bless these abundantly, that the, the work that we do would be a great blessing to many. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting that you hear us and you will answer us, for we lift these prayers to you in the mighty and amazing name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand as you are able. scattered on the hill were gathered into one to become our ground so may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you as this cup of blessing is shared within our midst may we share the of your love as the grains of wheat once scattered on the hill were gathered 
before he died, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it to them all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is God's table, and everyone is welcome here. So come, you who have great faith and you who wish you had more. Come, you who've been here often and you who've not been for a long time. Come, you who've tried to follow and you who have fallen short. Come, not because I invite you, but because God desires to meet you here. And for those who are celebrating at home, please know that you are part of this table and part of this meal. This is the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. The congregation may be seated.
please stand as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ give us strength for today and hope for tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word. Christ Jesus, the joy and the delight of our hearts. Strengthened by this food, send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The God of glory, Jesus Christ, name above all names, and the Spirit who lives in you, bless you now and forever. Amen. I have promised to serve you to the end. Remain forever near me, my master and my friend. I shall not fear the battle if you are by my side. From the pathway, if you will be my guide, oh, let me lay clear me. The world is ever near. I see the sights that dazzle, the tempting sounds I hear. Hear the battle if you be but within. But Jesus, then draw nearer to shield my soul from sin. Oh, let me hear you speaking in accents clear and still. Above the storms of passion, the murmurs of self-will, now speak to reassure me to hasten or control. Now speak and make me listen, O guardian of my soul. Jesus, you have promised to all who follow you that where you are in glory, your servant shall be too. And Jesus, I have promised to serve you to the is stronger than evil. Love is stronger than hate. Join, Join our, our hearts, hearts to yours, yours Lord, Lord God. God. Teach us to love as you love, Lord. Make, Make us, us a servant, servant church, church that walks in your ways. ways. Go in peace. Live in love. Love to serve. We, we go, go reaching out, sharing, sharing grace. grace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.